Hello, folks. Today we're we'll do, doing lesson number 106. Let me be still and listen to the truth. This is on page 190. It's 10 paragraphs long. We're going to do two paragraphs at a time, and we're going to do our best to finish in under an hour, a little bit under an hour. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read the first two paragraphs. Is everybody ready on lesson number 106? Yes. Ready. Okay. All right. Let me be still and listen to the truth. Paragraph one. If you will lay aside the ego's voice, however loudly it may seem to call, if you will not accept its petty gifts that give you nothing that you really want, if you will listen with an open mind that has not told you what salvation is, then you will hear the mighty voice of truth quiet in power, strong in stillness, and completely certain in its messages. Paragraph two. Listen and hear your father speak to you through his appointed voice, which silences the thunder of the meaningless and, and shows the way to peace to those who cannot see. Be still today and listen to the truth. Be not deceived by voices of the dead, which tell you they have found a source of life and offer it to you for your beliefs. Attend them not, but listen to the truth. Okay. End of paragraph two. So the point today is to just be still an instant before any interaction or before any uh, conversation you, you have with a brother. Be still for a second and listen to the truth. And the truth is love. And so listen to God's voice, which is love, and then try to align with God's voice and be God's voice in that interaction. And the way that you're going to note that you're hearing God's voice is because you're going to have peace. Which is uh, the second part of sentence number one in paragraph two, which silences the thunder of the meaningless, which means the ego's mindset, and shows the way to peace, meaning the, the word of God to those who cannot see. Any comments or questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Who are the voices of the dead who we should not be deceived by? Those who are the voices of the past. You can call the dead the past. And, uh, and your past programming. And so any past programming, which, is, which means any unloving thought, so just judgment and anger and resentment and fear and anxiousness and doubt and shame and guilt. Those are all voices of the past. So let's say, be not deceived by voices of the past. Okay, so be not deceived by the beliefs, like say, in, in, your, in your belief in resentment, let's say. That's an example. So don't be deceived by, by the ego telling you, hey, it's, it's okay to be resentful of this person for X or Y reason. That's being deceived by the voices of the past. Because that resentment and holding on to the resentment will never bring you the peace that this lesson is trying to uh, offer you today. And so the second part it says, which tells you that they have found the source of life or the source to peace and offer it to you for your belief. And so resentment is going to tell you, okay, if you res stay resentful, then it's okay for you to be resentful and you can achieve peace by doing that. That's just, that's just a deception. And so all you have to do is recognize that deception and not uh, listen to it. And then in sentence number four, attend, attend them not. So don't listen to the ego's tools and mindset, but listen to the truth, which is the love of God. Is that somewhat uh, answering your question? It does. I just, the voices of the dead sort of threw me a little bit. Yeah. That's all. But yeah. that, you, know, you know, the course uses uh, uh, different terms to mean the same thing. Life, it's the same thing as love. When you're talking about the voices of the dead, it are thoughts that have no love in them. And if there's no love in them, there is no life. When we are caught up in anger, resentment, and stuff, we're not living. But to the in the to the course, 
living is experiencing the, the, the you know love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. So when it says, you know, voices of the dead, it's saying voices that have no love, that, which means they have no life. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that because that's a, that's a very uh, um, worthy statement there. Okay, so anything that, any voices of the dead is what Mike just said. There are thoughts that have no love in them, okay? Which means, because they have no love in them, they have no life in them. And so that's voices of the, of the dead. So that's a good question and that's a good answer. Uh, any other questions or comments on paragraph one and two? Okay, would somebody like to read three and four? I will. Thank you. Be not afraid today to circumvent the voices of the world. Walk lightly past their meaningless persuasion. Hear them not. Be still today and listen to the truth. Go past all things which do not speak of him who holds your happiness within his hand, held out to you in welcome and in love. Hear only him today and do not wait to reach him longer. Hear one voice today. That voice is capitalized. That just means God? Yes, God's voice. Today the promise of God's word is kept. Hear and be silent. He would speak to you. He comes with a, with miracles a thousand times as happy and as wonderful as those you ever dreamed or wished for in your dreams. His miracles are true. They will not fade when dreaming ends. They end the dream instead and last forever. For they come from God to his dear son, whose other name is you. Prepare yourself for miracles today. Today, allow your father's ancient pledge to you and all your brothers to be kept. That's very beautiful. Yes. And uh, paragraph three, sentence six, hear only him today, or aka hear only love today. And so only loving thoughts are true today. And so listen only to loving thoughts. And whenever those thoughts that are unloving in nature come, just practice uh, stopping as quickly as possible that line of thinking because that's not your goal for today. You can play with those delusions as much as you want later on other days. But today, we're not going to listen to those delusional thoughts. So whenever a judgment of a brother or sister, whenever condemnation, hatred, resentment, guilt, shame pop up in your mind, today we're not going to pay any attention to that. Today we're only going to practice listening to God's voice and being an extension of his voice to our brothers and sisters. And so in sentence number five, paragraph three, go past all things which do not speak of him, aka go past all things, all of the ego's tools, which do not speak of love, who holds your happiness, and happiness is an expression of that love within his hand or within his mindset. So when you align with the mind of God, you align with happiness. You align with love. Held out, out in welcome and in love. And so, uh, wait, wait. Yeah, so, and, uh, and another, ahead, yeah, another term for his voice is simply love. That's what God, that's what God's voice is, love. And then sentence number six, paragraph four, they will not fade when dreaming ends. That means the truth will not fade when the dream ends, but they end the dream instead. And the dream is, is any belief that the ego's mindset and tools are real. That's the, that's the dream. So when you deny the dream, you wake up from it. When you stop investing your time, focus and energy in the dream, you awaken from it. And that's your goal for today to awaken from the dream, from the ego's dream. Judgment-centered, fear-based dream. And then in sentence number eight, paragraph four, prepare yourself for miracles today. And so prepare yourself for the shift in perceptions today. And so if you have a negative perception or un slash unloving perception, uh, just prepare yourself to shift that today. 
and know that that's your goal today, to practice shifting your perception from the delusion to the truth, from the dream to awakening, from the false to the truth. Any comments or questions for paragraph three and four? I have one. Yes. Or, or two. Okay. Um, well, it's interesting to me, this that paragraph, the reason I wanted to read it is because the first line, be not afraid. Um, when I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina, there was a synagogue there and I loved going inside because there was this giant thing. When you walked in, it was on the ceiling, but it was, it said, stand before your God and be not afraid. And um, it's interesting to me. I'm just looking at the language of this. It's very directional, like be not afraid, be still, hear only him. You know, it's, it's just telling you, this is, this is what you need to do. And it's very authoritative because it has to happen but i i love i love what it promises you know i love what you said that it's it's the miracle is true and it's the it ends the dream and yeah. and i also like that it says they come from god to his dear son whose other name is you um because it doesn't always say that but it does every once in a while but it's a very powerful thing to hear that this is you know for us that all of us, that we're all that, that we're all getting this. It's all for us. It's just, I just think it's very beautiful today. Yes. And uh, when you said, when you, like you said, you equals all of us because we're all one. And so held out to you, which means held out to all of us and welcome, welcome and, and love. And if you ever studied the Bible and you study uh, the uh, angel encounters, that people in the Bible have, a lot of times, the first thing they say to you is, be not afraid. And so that, that comes directly from uh, the biblical uh, language. Because obviously, the first reaction, as the Course says, is the eagle's reaction. And so the eagle always sends its first and loudest, so that's usually fear. And so don't punish yourself for having a fearful thought. But do practice when that thought comes, remembering that's not a part of the truth in you. And so challenge that untruth. I say, no, I've already played this game a thousand times. I'm not going to listen to this CRAP anymore. Okay. And so uh, be not afraid. Remember that. Be not afraid. That's what the angels in the Bible always say to people when, the, when they uh, first see them. So to uh to re to remember to remind them that you know they are one with with them, and so they they don't have to fear. Any other comments or questions in uh, paragraph three and four? All right. Would somebody like to read uh, five and six? All right, I'll go ahead. Okay, hear, hear him. That's another one. Hear him today and listen to the word which lifts the veil that lies upon the earth hmm. and wakes all those who sleep and can, cannot see. God calls to them through you. He needs your voice to speak to them. For who could reach God's son except his father calling through yourself? Hear him today and offer him your voice to speak to all the multitude who wait to hear the word that he will speak today. Be ready for salvation. It is here. And will today be given unto you, and you will learn your function from the one who chose it in your Father's name for you. Listen today, and you will hear a voice which resounds throughout the world through you. The bringer of all miracles has need that you receive them first, and thus become the joyous giver of what you receive. Okay. <laughs> Uh, paragraph six, sentence five, the bringer of all miracles has need that you receive them first. Okay. 
So you cannot give to other people something you do not have. Okay? So if you are to be the voice of God today and any day, you first have to accept the truth as true, love as true, and believe it. And when you believe it, when it resides within you, then and only then can you offer it to others. And so when that voice comes, the voice of truth comes, the voice that says to forgive instead of judge, to have compassion instead of have condemnation. That's the voice of God. And first you have to allow it into you and you have to believe it as true and then you can offer it to others. And the second part of that sentence, and thus become the joyous giver of what you have received. So you have to receive it first to, to give it to others. Any comments or questions on paragraph five and six? Did I hear you right that we are the voice of God? Yes, we are the voice of God here on earth. Okay. So pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what that's the, what the ego would say. Okay. But what if what if you're simply being who you truly already are? Can there be anything easier? than being who you truly already are? And the answer to that is no. So there's nothing easier for you to be than to be love, no matter what the ego says. Remember, whatever the ego says is a lie. It's not true. It's not you, okay? So the easiest thing in the world is to be the voice of God because all you're doing is being who you were created by God to be. So that, don't let the ego tell you that it's difficult to be the voice of God because it's not. That's the easiest thing in life because that's the more, most natural thing in life. When you do it, you feel, you feel, feel, F-E-E-L, <laughs> like you're fulfilling your function as the light of the world, like you're fulfilling the function that God gave you, okay? So when you're doing that, you feel fulfilled. And so... Fulfill your mission as the light of the world today by being God's voice. Sentence number three, paragraph five. He needs your voice to speak to them, to speak to those who are lost. For who could reach God's son except his father calling through you? And so who could reach your brother or sister except your father's voice being spoken through you? And so that's what God, God needs you to help his children Awaken from the dream. And so if you think you don't have a function on earth, simply you're delusional. <laughs> if you're talking to any single person on earth, you have a function. And this function is to bring them closer to the light in them. In every interaction, in every moment. And if you were not needed in God's plan, then guess what? You would not be here. At least his plan on earth. Maybe you're needed in heaven. <laughs> and then you're not here. But if you are here on earth, then for X or Y reason, God needs you here on earth to be his voice. And all he's asking you to do is to simply be who you truly are and nothing else. He's not asking you to jump through rings of fire. Okay? Okay. He's simply asking you to be who you were created to be. And the more you are who you were created to be, the more you re will reinforce who you truly are. And the more you reinforce who you truly are, the more natural and normal that behavior will become. And the more natural and normal that behavior becomes, the more you'll want to repeat that behavior. Because that behavior will bring you to the state of peace, to the state of joy. And so that's what you're being asked to do today. In uh, some places, the Course um, uses the term, the voice that speaks for you. In other places, it uses the term, the, the voice that speaks for God. In other places, it says Holy Spirit. These are the same thing. When it talks about, you know, it, you know, 
the voice that speaks for you. It's the voice that speaks for who we really are. And in that case, it's talking about our reality. Not the voice that speaks for who you think you are, but the voice that speaks for who you really are. The voice that speaks for you. Same thing as the voice that speaks for God. Same thing as Holy Spirit. Same thing as a quiet center of the storm. Same thing as the inner guide. Same thing as the internal teacher. Yes. And uh, paragraph five, sentence four. Offer him your voice to speak to all the multitude who wait to hear the word. And so a uh, useful practice is to ask God slash love slash peace slash joy what to think, say, and do, and then think, say, and do only that. Let's say uh, your brothers or sisters are in judgment of self or others. What's your, what's your function in, in that moment? Your function in the moment as a voice for God is to guide them to a place of forgiveness, a place of compassion, a place of understanding. That's your function in that moment. Ask the voice of God. If your brother or sister are fearful or anxious or worried or doubtful, okay, what's your what's your mission in that in that moment? How can you be the voice for God in that moment? You become a beacon of peace. Someone who shares with others that if they trust God more, they worry less. Someone who reminds others that if they place their worries and fears in God's hands, those fears and worries will melt away and dissolve before your light and understanding. And so that's what you're being asked to do. God, what would you have me think, say, and do? And then think, say, and do only that. Love, what would you have me think, say, and do? And then think, say, and do only that. That's being the voice for God. Any other comments or questions on paragraph five and six? All right, let's do seven and eight. Would somebody like to read seven and eight? Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. Thank you. Thus does salvation start and thus it ends. When everything is yours, and everything is given away, it will remain with you forever. And the lesson has been learned. Today, we practice giving, not the way you understand it now, but as it is. Each hour's exercises should begin with this request for your enlightenment. I will be still and listen to the truth. What does it mean to give and to receive? Ask and expect an answer. Your request is one whose answer has been waiting long to be received by you. It will begin the ministry for which you came and which will free the world from thinking giving is a way to lose. And so the world becomes ready to understand and to receive. Okay, paragraph seven. Sentence six, what does it mean to give and to receive? That means uh, when you give, you're in essence sharing, okay? And then, and to receive, in essence means to reinforce. And so what happens is when you offer any of love's expressions, you are sharing God with your brother and sister, okay? You're sharing God, love, peace, joy, understanding, compassion, kindness, charity. And then when you share that, you get to reinforce that within yourself, okay? Because the more you share truth, the more you reinforce it and solidify it within yourself. And then the brighter and taller beacon of light you become for this world. And so that's is what it's meant by true giving and true receiving. It's the sharing of truth and by doing so, reinforcing the truth. And the only things you ever get to keep in reality are those you get to share. And the only thing you can truly share is truth. You can't share lies. Because lies are nothing, in essence. Because 
God, love is everything, is all. And so you can either share the truth or you can share the dream, the ego's dream. The ego's dream never delivers to you peace of mind and joy. The truth always delivers to you true peace of mind and joy. And so that's those are your choices today. Will you be a, a sharer of truth or a sharer of the dream, the ego's dream, a.k.a. nightmare? <laughs> Any comments or questions on paragraph seven and eight? I have a question. Um, yes. Yesterday, we discussed the Holy Spirit. And so when this says, when this talks about listening, is that what we're listening for? for the Holy Spirit, like it says, listen to, listen today, and you will hear a voice, which will resound throughout the world through you. Is that the Holy Spirit it's referencing? Yes, that's the Holy Spirit. Because remember, when Jesus left uh, in the 40th day after his uh, crucifixion, he told the disciples to fast for 10 days, and that he will send a comforter to, to them. And so after, after when Jesus departed the earth and then uh, the disciples fasted for 10 days and on the 10th day, the Holy Spirit descended upon them. And then from then on, the Holy Spirit became the conduit between God's voice and, and, our, and ourselves. And the more we listen to the truth, aka listen to the Holy Spirit, the more we're able to share the truth with others. And does uh, reawaken others to who they truly are. And so, yes, that voice is the Holy Spirit. Thank and you. The, yes. And you, you know, that, go ahead. Oh, just that, yeah, there is a part in the Course that says, um, the eyes don't see and the ears don't hear. You know, when, when the Course talks about hearing, it means listening to what someone says and and hearing what they're really saying okay i use a silly example you might hear somebody say oh don't you dare ever call me again but if you listen carefully they're saying something different aren't they they're saying you know i'm i, I feel uh maybe i feel rejected or something I, I, I feel alone, and uh, the only thing I can think of is try to be angry and, and, and snap at you. So, of course, you know, the ears don't hear and the eyes don't see. What it's talking about, when it says to see, it means to look and see what's really there. You know, but it's particularly important when you hear or see our brothers doing something. Is like, yeah, yeah, you hear the words and then you hear what it is that they're really saying. Yes, and that's uh, what the Course calls uh, hearing either love or a call for love. Okay, Correct. That's, that's true hearing. There's nothing else that's true hearing. Your brother or sister is either saying loving words or they're asking for love from you. And uh, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll say what's in the Bible, which is basically what Mike yet said that was in the course. It says, uh, I think it's yeah, it's Mark Mark four nine. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And also Matthew eleven fifteen, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so they were saying the same thing. Both the, both disciples. And so, what is the, what? What are they really saying? It's what exact they're saying exactly what Mike just said. Okay, what is my brother saying? What What's the only thing they can say? If you have the ears to hear, they can only be loving words that they're saying, or they can only be asking for help and healing. That's it, nothing else. And so, when you hear with the ears that they were giving you to hear then you're hearing uh, uh, people's true request. Again, like we, we talked about before in, in a class. If your brother or sister is judging you, right? What is that? 
for those who have ears to hear. That's simply somebody who in reality is asking for help and healing. In reality, they're asking you for a way to forgiveness, a way to compassion, a way to kindness. And so that's what you're there to do. And so uh, that's having the ears to hear and having the eyes to see, which I'm sure it's in the Bible, which I don't remember right now. Um, any other comments or questions on paragraph seven and eight? I was wanting to comment about okay. uh, the hitting part, which is um, also related to when we say that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Um, you know, that many times we listen or we are there present, but sometimes we are not receptive to hearing what what really help us, you know, because many of the things that like now being present here, you know, I'm, I'm listening and I'm being super receptive because this is what I want. I want a lot of growth. A lot of, I want to transform my my ego into a more friendly one, a more peaceful one. And instead of being on, you know, on the nightmare, being in, the, in a happy dream, like Mike says, and I, like, like you, James, um, you know, are here helping us in, in this true giving, in this true hearing. And um, so uh, it happens that uh, like I had an interaction with someone and uh, it's, and then I was talking to a therapist and she was telling me, it's like a target. Sometimes it's like, you never make them happy. Sometimes, you know, because it's like the moment that you are giving there, they like, oh, go to the left, oh, go to the right. And it comes and like, it's not good enough. No, that was not good. No, that didn't come, came in the way I wanted. So, well, well, that's a few. There's not always like that. There's always good receptors. That's the nice thing that we can always find people that when you give, they are super receptive, super grateful. And that's that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And if they are not, still, you know, to practice the unconditional love, the unconditional giving, which is um, which is not that easy to to become very like uh, unconditional. If one of the things the other day I heard from my daughter and she told me, mom, you always give us this unconditional love. You know, sometimes we misbehave and you shower us with peace. And, uh, you know, we're so proud of you. She was saying something nice. I decided to make amend with her because one of the steps, the step nine, I had to talk to one of my daughters. You know, I think I, I've been self-seeking and uh, considerate with you, blah, blah, blah. And she was, no, mom, no, 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 no. I want, I'm, see, if it, anything, I was the one. I will be the one, you know, apologizing to you, et cetera. But I heard about the unconditional love. That's what I mean, you know. Never, never, ever I heard someone saying that. But how nice that a daughter could say, mom, you're giving me unconditional love. I think that's probably what we do sometimes, you know. And, uh, and many times also expect uh, back. But... um. The hearing, you know, it's it's so beautiful to be receptive to that. Because when that comes, listen, the impact, the impact that this gives, like right now you were mentioning about this. Uh, hold on, let me, let me, let me read it. Uh, you were saying that like when you give, you are reinforcing it in yourself. You give, you know, from love, from this side of, of the Holy Spirit, from this side of the, the best side of us. And we are reinforcing this goodness in us. It's like, wow, how impactful it is. Because how many times people want to give? Many of them, you know, many of us give unconditionally only when it's sometimes convenient or so. So this changes completely, you know. Uh, 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 it's a shift on, uh, on the way I was giving and the way I would like to give. Every time I give, it's like, you know, it's a silent voice, of course. It's no, it's a silent voice in me, inside me. It will be like I'm reinforcing this, this, this doing something good for somebody, helping someone, reinforcing that this is a good thing. This is something kind to do, right? Could you explain a little, little bit more about it, um, James, on this giving and reinforcing? Yes. Because it's not beautiful. You just said it and it was so beautiful. I think that's how I interpret. Yeah, yeah. No, that's perfect. Yeah, it's when you offer the truth in you, 
you reinforce that truth. And then be, that behavior, the more you do so, becomes more natural and normal. Mm -hmm. And thus your foundation is solidified. And so you become, when you offer forgiveness, when the world calls for judgment, you become a more solidified beacon of peace for you for this world. When, when people are anxious or stressed out and you show them how they can trust God and have peace, the more you do so, the more you solidify your foundation in that truth. And then you become that beacon of, of peace for those brothers who are lost. And so, yes, the more you reinforce the truth in you, the more natural and normal expressing the truth in you becomes. Mm -hmm. And then the more you do that, the more you, that becomes your natural expression, you know, your normal expression. And then and uh, people will react to it in a way that's uh, very appreciative, well, usually, because that's what they know unconsciously that they desire and deserve. They deserve that, that compassion. They deserve that forgiveness, that kindness, that generosity of spirit. And so, yes, what you said is true. And I will add to that is uh, to, add, to reinforce one thing that Wendy likes and also what Beatrice was speaking about. I'm going to Sentence number one, uh, paragraph seven. Thus does salvation start and thus it ends. When everything is yours and everything is given away, it will remain with you forever. Okay? When everything is given away, that means when they say everything, that means everything is true. That means love. Everything that comes from love, when it's given away, it's kept forever. And... After saying that, I'll go to one of the, uh, Wendy's very favorite paragraphs because I have to read that this paragraph in this moment because it 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 aligns with this paragraph too, and this is paragraph eight, page eighty three, and it talks about what you get to forever get to keep. Okay, paragraph eight, page eighty three. I'll just read it and then I'll come back to to the lesson. How can you, who are so holy, suffer? All your past except this beauty is gone, and nothing is left but a blessing. I have saved your kindness and every loving thought you ever had. I have purified them of, er of the arrows that hid their light and kept them for you in their own perfect radiance. They are beyond destruction and beyond guilt. They came from the Holy Spirit within you. And we know what God creates is eternal. You can indeed depart in peace because I have loved you as I have loved myself. You go with my blessing and for my blessing. Hold it and share it that it may always be ours. I place the peace of God in your heart and in your hands, to hold and share. The heart is pure to hold it. The hands are strong to give it. We cannot lose. And so that's what is meant by giving away everything. Is that whatever you give, that's true. You get to forever get to keep. Uh, guys, I got to go. I uh, facilitate a course class for some friends. Uh, at 7.45, so uh, good night, everybody. Bye. Good night, brother. Bye. Bye, Mike. Good night. Good night. Any, any questions or comments on paragraph 7 and 8? Just on page 83. That's my favorite. Yeah. I know. That's a, that's you wonder. A, yeah, that's a beautiful paragraph. Thank you for reading it. Yeah. You should go ahead and print it out and uh, and lam uh, laminate it <laughs> and uh, put it on your on your refrigerator. <laughs> I might put it on my office. That's a great idea. Yeah, it is. It's a good idea for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's finish off with paragraph nine and ten. Would somebody like to read? I, I can do the reading. Thank you. Be still and listen to the truth today. For each five minutes spent in listening, a thousand minds are open to the truth and they will hear the holy word 
you hear. And when the hour is past, you will again release a thousand more who pause to ask that truth be given them along with you. Today, the holy word of God is kept through you, receiving it to give away, so you can teach the word what giving means by listening and learning of learning it of him. Do not forget today to reinforce your choice to hear and to receive the word by this reminder, given to yourself as often as is possible today. Let me be still and listen to the truth. I'm the messenger of God today. My voice is his to give what I receive. How beautiful. Amen. Amen. Uh, yes. So uh, I am the messenger of God today. That's pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Let me be still. Okay. So how do you become the messenger of God today? Let me be still and listen to the truth. And how do you do that? Okay. Just take, uh, let's say, uh, practice taking 30 seconds before any interaction and going to God and saying, God, please lead me through this interaction. Please let me express only loving thoughts. Please let me use only loving words. Please let me react to my brother's words, thoughts and words with kindness and compassion. And that's all you have to do before every interaction. Set your goal. Set your goal. Today, I'm going to be the messenger of God, a.k.a. love. Today, I'm going to be love's messenger. And I'm going to only offer that love to my brothers and sisters. And in doing so, as I share it, I reinforce it in me. And as I reinforce it in me, I become it. And so that's all we have to do over and over again to practice doing that. Because how many, how many, how many moments or, or minutes do we actually offer to God to just ask him to be with us uh, for in an interaction? When we're talking to our daughters, when we're talking to our students, what if we just invite God to speak through us, to allow love to speak through us? What kind of day in life will we create if we only allow love to speak through us in each moment and in interaction. What if forgiveness or compassion were your constant companions throughout the day? What kind of life and example would you set for your students and your daughters and your sons and all those who are in your presence who God sends your way? And so that's all we're being asked to do today. Let me be still for a moment and listen to the truth. Listen to love. I am the messenger of love today. My voice is his to give what I receive. Any comments or questions in regards to those last two paragraphs? It's it's very high demanding to be the messenger of God. It's it's like listen. I feel like I, I need to have these these wings like an angel, you know, be golden, really really holy, shining. I mean, it, it it's it's a it's a big choose, big choose to fit, right? It's like I I see it myself. Like wow, what about if I could be the messenger of God? Oof, it's 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 something really holy. But so, is it just allowing? I mean, it's not something we really have to do other than allow. The allower, yeah. Right? Yes. So allow yes. it through us. Right, exactly. Uh, so what, it, what is happening, okay, imagine a faucet, okay? Imagine you're a faucet. And all you have to do is turn, turn the faucet on, okay? That's, your, that's free will. That's called free will. Yeah. You, you turn the faucet on. Or you leave it off. That's your only choice. If you turn the faucet on, God continuously flows through you and throughout your day. Love continuously flows through you and throughout your day because that's the only thing that's truly real. If you turn the faucet off, then you don't hear the God's message and you start uh, aligning with thoughts that are unloving in nature. And so, yes, you can just allow just allow what's true to be true. And that's all you have to do. 
And that's an, another example of why it's really easier than what the ego thinks it is. And uh, what Isabel just mentioned about it being uh, kind of like a, you know, a challenging thing to do is it, basically what Wendy said earlier in, in the class. And what I'll say again is this, there's nothing easier than being who God created you to be. Okay. So when the lesson is asking you to be the word of God today, to be the voice of God today, there's in reality nothing easier than to be who God created you to be. If you were created by, by love, capital L, to be love, small l, how hard can it be to be love if you align with the truth in you? It's completely easy, it's completely natural, and it's completely right. And when you do so, you feel at peace and you feel fulfilled because you're simply fulfilling your purpose and mission as the light of the world. And so when the, when the exercise calls to be the voice of God, don't allow the ego to tell you that's so hard to do. No, that's not true. Yes, it's hard for the ego to do because the ego places itself in a total opposition to God. So yes, it will be hard for, if you hear the ego, it will be hard for you to be the voice of God. But if you simply are who God created you to be, it'll be there'll be nothing easier than being that loving voice of God. There'll be nothing more natural and normal than being the voice of God. Because that's who you are. That's who you were created to be. That's your function and mi mission here on earth. In each moment and interaction, be the voice of God. And the more you practice consciously being the voice of God, Little by little, the more that becomes an unconscious response. And then you'll be saying, oh, wow, I was pretty loving in that interaction. And uh, and then you go, I guess the practice practice makes perfect, I guess. And But uh, yes, there's nothing easier than being who God created you to be, which is love. And so please do not uh, listen to the ego when it tells you that you have to be so holy to be do this exercise. No. All you have to do is be who God created you to be. And there's nothing easier than that. Actually, of course, Cole said, an effortless accomplishment. Okay? That's how normal and natural love the, the voice of God is to you. It's an effortless accomplishment. So the more you practice being the voice of God, the voice of love, the voice of peace, the voice of compassion and kindness and charity and joy, the more you practice this, the more you see that, you know, this is where you belong. This is your function here on earth, to be the voice of God. And when you're not being the voice of God, you don't have to punish yourself. Because that's what the ego wants. The ego wants you not to be the voice of God, and then it has you judge yourself for not being the voice of God. And so the ego has you judge your brother or sister, and then has you judge yourself for judging your brother and sister. The ego produces a swampland, it gets you stuck in the swampland, and you sink into that darkness. That's what the ego wants. And so when you're here, when you're out of alignment with your mission today, which is to be the voice of God, just recognize when you're being when you're not being the voice of God and use this moment here to practice recognizing, okay, this is judgment, this is anger, this is resentment. I'm not, I don't belong here today. I belong being the loving light of the world. And so when the ego calls for judgment, you recognize judgment is not who I'm supposed to be today. And therefore, I'm going to offer forgiveness. When the ego says fear, I'm not here to be fear. I'm here to be peace. When the ego says anger, you, you see that's not that's not who you're supposed to be today. You're supposed to be the voice of God. And so you offer compassion instead. And so the ego, in essence, unknowingly, is always teaching you what to really say. Because all you have to really say is do the opposite of what the ego wants. And so the ego itself is a self-destructs in that way. Because when the ego is talking and you recognize the ego, all you have to do is to, 
often the opposite of what the ego is demanding. And that's how you reinforce who you truly are and how you become the voice for God. Any other comments or questions? The, the, the ego demands attack, defense, defense, attack, blame, shame, pain, suffering. So doing the opposite of what the ego demands. Yeah, as you said, you know, it can become a habit to respond positively, to respond kind, to respond, oh, okay, it's a call for love. Uh, let me forgive. Let me turn the page. Uh, let me breathe in. Um, it's it's not that difficult to create a habit. The thing is that uh, I think there's moments where, um, you know, I, I get the duality here when we uh, become a little bit tested, you know, by circumstances that demands a different energy. Sometimes it does demand a different energy, given that uh, some people take advantage. When you're kind, you're nice, you know, they want more. More of this, more of that, more of that, of your patience, more of your patience. And they will start maybe doing less, on less, on less. And it could be our kids. It could be our kids too. That, um, so um, I guess more unconditional on my love, more unconditional on my, on my giving, on, on my understanding, but no unconditional on my credit. Like the other day someone was saying, it's not an unlimited credit. But it is, yes, and, you know, like they will ask for more money and more this or more. I think that's what this guy was saying the other day in a meeting. And, uh, but yes, about about love. I think it was a beautiful thing when, when we receive that. I guess I recognize that when someone has given me unconditional in the moment, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing. And sometimes it, it comes from people that are so simple, you know, and, and I guess... Sometimes it's the more simple that the um, that the kindness and nice and uh, less guarded. So, but yes, forgiveness is one of the ways to to bring those walls in between down, so we can connect better, get closer. And it's just one of the things that um. Uh, sometimes it's, it's not that easy to practice. Yesterday you were saying something about forgiving ourselves and uh, a practice that you do. Uh, do you do that on a daily basis or it's uh, only when you feel like you have done something, James? Yeah, you try to do that on a daily basis whenever the ego takes control of your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your mind does not belong aligned with the ego. But because the ego has programmed us and it always answers first, it usually answers first and loudest. We use that as an opportunity to practice forgiving ourselves, forgiving our misperceptions of what's really going on. Okay. So, so could you give us an example of how, it doesn't need to be real, but like a, a, an example of how will you be talking in your mind or loud? Like, yes. God, forgive me because I have seen, what, what do you say? Something, can you give us an example of, of how you self? Yes. Praying to let's, uh, let's take, let's try to make a, an example that I mm -hmm. might, I might have experience in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say I'm in the gym and somebody takes control of the controller of the TV and changes the channel mm -hmm. or puts it too loud or is talking too loud on their cell phone, whatever. And my first reaction thanks to the ego, is to judge that person as, as unpleasant or as unkind or as rude, okay? Mm -hmm. That means I'm judging my brother or sister, okay? But what really is happening is God is reminding me that in any situation, I can choose forgiveness over judgment and thus peace over pain. Okay, so what is my brother or sister really doing? My brother or sister is really just offering me the opportunity to let go of the eagle's nightmare, align with the mind of God, and thus experience the state of peace. And so if, if your brother or sister, what they're really doing when your ego says to judge them is they're offering you opportunity to be, become the voice of God by letting go of the delusion, your proper response to your brother or sister is gratitude. Because you see what they're really doing. You go beyond the surface. 
And so that's an example of it. And also when you, when you, uh, when you, like you were talking about attack, mm -hmm. when you perceive a brother attacking you, okay? There's a lesson in the course that says, that's a very uh, great, it's a great lesson, like most of them are. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why? Because when you're saying in my defenselessness, in my noting that their attack is unreal, it's not true, then I don't have to defend myself against some illusion. If I defend myself against an illusion, I make that illusion real. But if I do not defend myself against that illusion, if I see it for just a call for help and healing, then I let go of the power that the illusion has. And so in my defenselessness, my safety lies. Whenever you start to hear your ego asking for judgment, in my defenselessness, my safety lies. So um, in this case, when there's this person puts the volume up, you know, loud, you may go like, oh my God, it's real annoying. But then probably quickly you go like, okay, I, I need to forgive this guy. You know, he doesn't know better or whatever. He's a little bit, uh, you know, the, the unconsiderate, et cetera. Let me forgive him. Don't you go like that? Basically, yeah, me? basically. Yeah. yeah. If you do that, then there is no, no a sin. There you right. will find because you have forgiven already. Right. And so let's say he puts up the volume a little too high. Okay. My ego immediately goes, that's kind of rude. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then I, re I remind myself immediately, rude is not who I am. That's not what I'm here to do in this world. Mm -hmm. I'm here to be a light of compassion and understanding and peace and joy. Mm -hmm. So I say, I say, okay, this person put this volume up. So that, I, so that I can see that I don't have to buy into the ego stream. I don't have to buy into this is real. I can instead say, okay, God is offering me an opportunity to practice letting go of my judgments, offering forgiveness instead, which is an expression of love, and thus reinforcing my true nature, which is love. And so that's what I would try to do. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what we do is, is enlarge our circle of friends and keep the circle that we have of love, affection, if we have a, a, a relationship, it's like, it, it makes me keep it. This way of, of being, it makes me keep, it's made me expand, it's made me solidify relationships. Good ones, toxic ones, healthy ones, everything. Yeah, everything is helping you remember who you truly are. Mm -hmm. uh, Wendy, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, I was thinking about how I had that reaction and and so did, was it um, Isabel or Beatrice also had uh, had a react. I think it was Isabel, that also had the same reaction about, oh my God, how can I be the voice of God kind of thing? And I thought how that is this, uh, that that's sort of perfectly encapsulates how separate we feel, like that it would be impossible for us. You know, how could we be that? And then, it was interesting because if I played with the language a little bit and I thought if I said I'm here to be an expression of God, I feel no anxiety, no sense of that's a lot of pressure because somehow the voice of God sounds like the authority. You know what I mean? Like if you're the voice of God, you want to make sure you're saying everything exactly right. That's why it feels like a lot of pressure. You're saying it's the easiest thing in the world, but I'm just thinking how just the reaction to that idea, uh, how it felt like a lot of pressure really is just a, a prime example of that feeling of separateness as in we're not the same. How could I be that? That's so much more powerful than me. But the voice of love, as Mike likes to say, instead of God, you know, if you say I'm here to be the voice of love, that feels like the easiest thing in the world to accept that mm -hmm. that 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 would be what we're supposed to be doing. Yes. So it's just interesting how the language, if you just change the word out, the difference in the feeling that it brings. Um, but I, so I, I, I don't know. I was just reflecting, especially because I, I don't think it was from the book. I was probably listening to something about the Course in Miracles, somebody, you know, talking and analyzing it. And um, they said that every, or I think it was from the disappearance of the universe, actually, where it said that, 
everything in this world sort of shows you it just keeps repeating our projections of separation, you know, like even having children, it's a body coming out and then it's, it's separate from you and divorces and relationships, like everything you can think of sort of mimics this idea of separation. And so we're very trained into feeling separate. And so even the language can trigger that, even just that language saying you are the voice of God can trigger that feeling of I could never possibly be God is not, you know, God is so much more powerful. God is so much more perfect. God is more, you know, but to just change that to the voice of love and immediately all the anxiety receives. And it's almost like you pulled the plug on the ego. To me, if you say you're here to be the voice of love, it's almost like you just pulled the plug out and the ego just collapses into nothingness. That is very easy to accept. Great. Yeah. So yeah, shift, shift the words all you want, because you know what? It's the exact same thing. It is. The voice of God and the voice of love are equal. Yeah. And, you know, so if the wording of the voice of love uh, works for you, then be that, because that is the voice of God. Yeah. Yeah, we are not used to that much. Uh, the God to us is like the like maximum, maximum, you know, omnipotent, powerful, yeah, unreachable. <laughs> perfect, perfect. But yeah, yes, so, you only for uh, for that, yeah, being yeah. The, the voice of peace or being the voice of kindness, the uh, voice of humbleness. The voice, oh, the voice of peace is beautiful. Of, of yeah. silence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if somebody's feeling anxious, or worried, or doubtful, or fearful, become the voice of peace for them. You know, so guide them to a place of peace. And so that's what you're meant to do in that moment, when they're stuck in their anxiousness and fear and doubt of them, and whatever. All right, any final comments or questions before we close? Yes, um, I would just like to say that, you know how sometimes uh, Mike likes to call me Wendy Christ, or, or Charles, say Wendy Krishna, or whatever. Um, I get permission when I say things like when I did tonight that I said, like, how could I be that? And you said, that's the voice of the ego. You have my permission to call me Wendy Ego in those minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll do it, but just for fun. <laughs> that's all this is just for fun. But I really appreciate you. And especially that you're at page 83. I want to say thank you, James. I love that. Like, you know. It's, it makes my day to hear it. I don't know why I don't look it up myself. Every time you bring it up or Charles does, it's like a thrill. But you're yeah. right. Print it out. Put it up. Yes. And Remind. maybe put it, in, put it in your bathroom mirror so you can see it in the first thing in the morning. Yeah. And you read that paragraph and then put it in your office so you have it there anytime the ego tries to strike. And Is so, it on page 83 from what? From which book? Page your 83. Book. <laughs> of course, yeah, of course, of course of Miracles, page 83. And uh, paragraph, I have to get to page 83 now. One second. Page 83, paragraph 8. Okay. My favorite number. Yes. Well, 8 uh, signifies it's... eternity, the eternal. And so this is oh. an eternal truth. You know what's so beautiful about that passage, too? It has yeah. a, It has a double effect. The first thing it does is to say that everything beautiful and kind, that's every piece of love that's ever been expressed to you lives forever, which is a comfort to me. Like I told you, you know, about, you know, my mother thinking about people who are gone, that that, that doesn't go away. It's real. And because that's what upset me is the idea that it wasn't real, that it was just a projection. But the opposite is also true in that it also tells you at the very same time that everything beautiful and loving that ever occurred stays forever. It also says to you, everything beautiful you do, everything kind you do also lasts forever. So it's such an encouragement to be kind to people, to be loving to people, you know, that it's eternal when you do that. It's just a beautiful, it just, it, it, it reaches every level. It's receiving and giving everything that's beautiful that's happened to you stays and everything beautiful you give also stays. There's a permanence in it. It's a very beautiful idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. All right, my friends. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you, Jane. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. And I'll, I'll good evening. Good evening. And I'll see you all soon, God willing. Take care. Yeah.
Peace. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Bye night.